This video is sponsored by World of Warships. What's the difference between a destroyer and a cruiser? When we talk about warfare ships, many people consider destroyers and cruisers the same. However, these two ships are very different and we'll be discovering the key differences between these two naval powerhouses in today's video. First, let's talk about the primary difference between these two warships. In the world of naval warfare, destroyers and cruisers each bring their own unique strengths to the table. Imagine destroyers as the fast and nimble guardians of the sea, which are designed to escort and shield larger vessels from a myriad of threats in a fleet or convoy. On the flip side, cruisers take it up a notch. Not only can they protect with finesse, but they also boast the ability to go solo. They can cruise through the seas to pose a direct threat to any adversary. And talking about modern cruisers, they get them as the heavyweight champs of a fleet, which are often second in size only to aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships. The Evolution of Cruisers and Destroyers When you go back in naval history, you will discover that the term cruiser has weathered centuries. It has undergone a metamorphosis that echoes the changing tides of warfare. In the age of sail, cruising wasn't about leisurely sea voyages. It was about missions, such as solo scouting, safeguarding commerce, or daring raids. And then frigates and sloops of war took center stage, weaving through the waves as the cruising warships of the fleet. Then in the heart of the 19th century, a new chapter unfolded. Cruiser became a classification, reserved for ships destined to venture into distant waters, engage in commerce raiding, and scout for the battle fleet. A diverse fleet emerged, ranging from medium-sized protected cruisers to hulking armored beasts, nearly rivaling pre-dreadnought battleships in size. But wait, the plot thickens with the arrival of the dreadnought battleship before World War I. The armored cruiser undergoes a transformation, emerging as a vessel of similar stature, christened the battle cruiser. These colossal vessels, successors to the armored cruisers, now joined dreadnought battleships as capital ships. Meanwhile, across the oceanic narrative, enter destroyers. Conceived in 1885 by Fernando Valamo for the Spanish naval, these vessels were initially designed to counter torpedo boats. Fast forward to the Russo-Japanese War in 1904, and the stage is set for torpedo boat destroyers. Russo-Japanese War era were swift, potent vessels dedicated to obliterating their nimble counterparts. Though initially coined as TBDs, the term destroyer gradually took center stage, with navies worldwide adopting it as the definitive moniker by the time the First World War unfolded. Let me tell you about our sponsor before we start on this video. World of Warships is one of the best free-to-play naval warfare games. With World of Warships, you can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels and unlock new ships as you prepare to dominate the seas. The ships are designed based on historical documents and actual blueprints from the first half of the 20th century, and players can battle on more than 40 maps. World of Warships has amazing graphics with new water effects and textures that make the game seem virtually indistinguishable from the real deal. Don't let your PC stop you from enjoying World of Warships. Experience not only on PC but on Xbox, PlayStation, or your phone. New content is released every month with its new ships in-game nations, cosmetics, ship classes, or incredible events like Godzilla vs. Kong, Transformers, or even Megadeth. You can always count on enjoying fresh gameplay experiences in World of Warships' stunning 12v12 arenas. Download World of Warships using the first link in the description below and use promo code HPPYNWYR2024 to receive a huge starter pack including a free ship, 300 doubloons, 1 million credits, seven days of premium account time, one ship, three Santa's gift containers, the New Year constellation flag, and 10 New Year sky camouflages. Applicable to new users only. Pre-World War II, destroyers were the swift foot soldiers of the seas. Limited in endurance for solo ocean ventures, Typically, a squadron of destroyers, accompanied by a lone destroyer tender, formed a cohesive unit. Having said that, let's talk about the next stage of evolution. Now in the early 20th century, the naval stage witnessed a captivating ballet of warship evolution after World War I. This was a time when the successors of protected cruisers found their place on a scale of warship size 
that was smaller than the grandeur of battleships. However, it had to be larger than a destroyer. Then in 1922, the Washington Naval Treaty took center stage. At that time, cruisers were limited to 10,000 tons displacement and guns not exceeding 8 inches in caliber. Fast forward to 1930, when the 1930 London Naval Treaty was signed. A division was crafted between heavy cruisers wielding 6.1 to 8 inch guns and their lighter counterparts armed with 6.1 inches or less. These constraints, both total and individual tonnage, became the choreographers shaping cruiser design until the eve of World War II. Among the performers were the German Deutschland-class pocket battleships and the American Alaska-class A Cruiser Killer, born from a scaled-up heavy cruiser design. Fast forward to the latter half of the 20th century, when the battleship's curtain call thrust cruisers into the limelight as the largest and mightiest surface combatants. Their roles were as diverse as the seas they navigated. Air defense and shore bombardment took center stage. During the Cold War, Soviet cruisers armed to the teeth with anti-ship missiles aimed to sink NATO carrier task forces through saturation attacks, adding a thrilling twist to the maritime narrative. The U.S. Navy, not to be outdone, took inspiration from destroyers but birthed a new generation, guided missile cruisers. These vessels, donned with advanced combat systems, buttled the once clear line between cruisers and destroyers. Now in the Maritime Chronicles of 2023, only three nations command the seas with active cruisers, the United States, Russia, and Italy. Now let's shift our focus towards destroyers. As the curtain fell on World War II, destroyers took the stage anew, growing in size like protagonists evolving over time. The Allen M. Sumner class, a mere 2,200 tons, pales in comparison to the modern Arleigh Burke class, boasting a colossal 9,600 tons of displacement, a staggering 340% increase in size. The advent of guided missiles rewrote the destroyer's script, casting them in roles once reserved for battleships and cruisers. All this birthed guided missile destroyers, which were larger, more potent, and capable of independent operation. In the 21st century, these destroyers stand as the undisputed global standard for surface combatants, with only the United States and Russia holding the official title of cruiser operators. Now in today's world, guided missile destroyers wield firepower superior to their World War II cruiser counterparts, showcasing their prowess with nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. We have ships like the Arleigh Burke class at a staggering 510 feet in length, a displacement of 9,200 tons, and armed with over 90 missiles, reign supreme. And China has the Chinese Type 055 destroyer, which is so massive that in some U.S. Navy reports, it's referred to as a cruiser. And you'll be surprised to note that confusion still persists as some NATO navies dub their destroyers frigates. So, which ship is more powerful? When it comes to the age-old question of which warship takes the crown in terms of power, the battle between cruisers and destroyers is tough. Both contenders boast effective capabilities, come with unique designs, and wield powerful weapons, which makes it difficult to choose between these two formidable warriors. There are three crucial factors to consider. The first one is speed. In the naval speed race, destroyers take the lead, cruising at an average of 33 knots per hour, leaving cruisers in their wake at a mere leisurely 20 knots per hour. Now let's talk weight. Destroyers, ranging from 5,000 to 10,000 tons, carry a substantial load. On the flip side, cruisers prefer to stay below the 10,000 ton mark, keeping it light and nimble. When it comes to size and capabilities, cruisers find themselves in a naval sweet spot. Smaller than a full-fledged warship, yet larger than the speedy destroyers. Speaking of destroyers, although they may be smaller, don't underestimate them. They're the agile guardians of the naval fleet, zipping through the waves with efficiency. Their knack for defense makes them the go-to escorts, shielding naval fleets and merchant ships from threats lurking in the sea, air, or even on land. In the world of naval dynamics, size isn't everything, and destroyers prove that speed and effectiveness can trump sheer size. I would say that when we talk about a defensive standpoint, the destroyer emerges as the powerhouse. It is basically the guardian of the fleet, merchant ships, or coastlines, equipped to counter threats from air, surface, or sea. Now let's shift the battleground to a warlike scenario. When the need arises to operate deep in enemy territory, the cruiser steps into the limelight as the true powerhouse. It's the lone wolf of the sea, operating independently and unleashing havoc on enemy coasts with formidable weapons, inflicting substantial losses. Talking about the specialties of each warship, 
Destroyers excel in anti-submarine, anti-surface, and anti-air missions, proving their mettle across all three domains. On the other hand, cruisers showcase their prowess with a robust anti-surface and anti-air game. In the end, I would say that the blurred lines between cruisers and destroyers reflect the dynamic nature of naval warfare, where roles shift and technologies redefine the possibilities of the open sea. If you like this video, you'll surely enjoy watching my other videos. So, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, and stay tuned.